Do you believe anything anymore? Is actually a sentence which I've heard from a couple people who had spent some time in churches which were, let's say, preaching the gospel on the left. And they were there. They actually were people I know who politically would have tended to vote left. They thought that that was the best political solution. And they were in these churches, which, you know, sometimes you would think they would have a very kindred spirit. And they were there, but they couldn't figure out why or what they were doing in terms of belief and thinking. It didn't resemble Christianity as they knew it historically or just what, you know, you would expect a Christian to think. Now, what they were sort of recognizing was the disappearance of theology from churches on the left and how it is replaced very often by ideology. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sanctus Forum. I am Michael Stewart Robb, better known as Mike, and we're doing conspiracy commentaries here on the Sanctus Forum. Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard. Don't have to have started with us lots of videos in the past about different sections, but um, we're in chapter two. We're talking about the gospel on the left, as Dallas Willard calls it, churches on the left who live in that. And um, almost done with that. So um, if you've been tired of listening to me talk about sort of left or liberal theology, gospel on the left, well, we're almost out of that phase. Um, just a note here, if you are a Dallas Willard interested person, you've read the books and you'd like to know what to do after you've read the books, or perhaps you've even listened to things, um, probably if you're here, you have. Um, this is a bibliography that we have created, I have created, written, and uh, it is free if you are a so-called friend of Sanctus and uh, go to sanctus.institute uh, forward slash friends and, or it's a backslash, I don't know, the link's there. You can get a free copy of this if you live in uh, the US or in uh, Europe. Um, we're talking today about the political and social meaning of love. That's the name of the section here. I've, I've lost it. Um, here it is for me on pages 52 and 53 of, of this edition. I know not everybody has that edition. Um, really what Dallas is going to get down to here is not so much love as God. Um, what or who is God? And what he's going to say is that there's a major difference between the older um, liberal theology, which uh, we talked about in a previous um, episode, and, and the new stuff. And that really comes down to the fact that the older folks could still talk about God in a roughly similar way as pretty much all Christians and, and really all Jews have talked about God. And that, however, the new sort of gospel on the left, churches on the left, don't really do that anymore. And um, a couple things he mentions here that just sort of drop off. One is this sort of idea of a transcendent God, a God who is somehow um, out of the movement of history and space, um, which we, do we have a movement of space? Well, he's just sort of outside of our world in a significant way, which means that he can kind of change the world in certain ways. They're not really interested in that anymore. They don't really know what that would mean. Um, they're interested in imminent understandings of God. So God moving in human love, as we talked about in the last episode. So transcendent God falls away. The other thing that then falls away is prayer. So you don't have any traditional understanding of prayer of, I ask God for something, I need help with something. Uh, and then he answers and he says, okay, we can do that. That doesn't really interest them anymore. That's not what prayer is. It just kind of becomes a sort of 
a ritual which you might not be sure why you're doing it. Why are you going to church services? Why are you um, praying these prayers at church services or at home? And of course, without the meaning, um, a lot of people in those churches or in that sort of world of thinking just just don't. And it is a reason why um, those churches do have difficulty getting people to actually come. Uh, would kind of make sense if you if you think it think it through. Now, philosophically, what's going on here? I don't know that Dallas actually mentions it, but um, what's going on is is naturalism. Um, so the idea is that we do live in a naturalistic universe, um, which doesn't really allow for uh, gods understood in the personal sense understood in the transcendent sense doesn't allow for prayer it means everything just happens in the realm of uh sort of natural processes uh there's a author called charles taylor who calls this the imminent frame so we live within the imminent imminent frame but naturalists believe that that imminent frame is closed so nothing can come in from the outside to change it or alter it or anything like that and what dallas wants to say is here you'll see this here at the beginning uh at the beginning at the end for me a paragraph starting with robbed of its reference he wants to say that if you lose that traditional understanding of God as a person, as a transcendent person, then you have no way to sort of let that influence what your understanding is of love. And love then becomes equal to whatever the current ideology is. You just have love being sort of supporting this leading ideology. And, and this is actually a place where I think the sort of the left and the right politically have, um, at least in the West, a lot of similarity because in the West, in Europe, in the United States, in Canada, and everywhere else that wants to call itself the West, the current ideology is focused on consumerism. And it's also focused on uh, senseism, sensualism, things that you can touch and see. That's what's... That's where the good stuff is. And so you have different political ideas of how you would help people become consumers um, or you would free them up um, to be consumers. Maybe you're gonna reduce their taxes or maybe you're going to sort of look out for oppression and make sure that they can sort of live a, a freer life so that they can be consumers. And consumerism is also very connected with this idea of desire, of being able to want something and actually get what you want. So desire is sort of one of the um, unchallenged goods of our society. We re don't really know what to do with desire apart from fulfill it. And that's pretty much the ide ideology that you will see on both the right and the left. Now on the left, you can see how that mainstream ideology is actually affecting churches, affecting their theology, and that's what you'd see in somebody like John A.T. Robinson, who we talked about last time. But on the right, it's happening too. That is on the political right. So think about this. Are we seeing in America, particularly, a right-wing version of liberal theology. That is where right-wing understandings in politics are influencing what people are actually thinking about God. There's this whole thing called God and country uh, people, and you know, you can Google it. Um, it's sort of this grouping, especially in America. I wonder, is that actually starting to affect what's being preached and what's being taught in the churches? And are we starting to see shifts in orthodoxy in order to support the sort of um, ideology, mainstream ideology, with the sort of right-leaning emphasis. So I don't know. Maybe that's something for the comments. I don't know that we really want to do uh, sort of a political discussion in comments, but, you know, it's relevant. Well, thanks for watching um, and for subscribing. Liking these videos, um, give them some love in that respect. There's this book which you can find. See you next time. Bye.